So in multiple myeloma, autologous stem cell transplantation is still the, I would say, the standard care of treatment for younger patients. So in Europe, we do about 8,000 transplant for multiple myeloma patients per year. And if you go for allo, we do only about five, four to 500. So the relation is more in favor for auto than in allo. This is different in different disease, but in multiple myeloma, it's more for auto. So in autologous stem cell transplantation, you rise, you gave a high dose chemotherapy and you gave back the stem cells just to support this high dose chemotherapy that the blood cells, so the white blood cells, the platelets, they can grow up again because to, due to this high dose chemotherapy, the stem cells are damaged. Hmm? In allogenic stem cell transplantation, it's a bit different because then you give new stem cells from a donor. And with these new stem cells, you also transplant a new immune system. In the autologous, you remain your own system. But in allogenic, you get a new one, a new stem cells, new immune system. And the idea is actually that this new immune system, they can recognize the myeloma cells as foreign and they attack this. By this is called graft versus myeloma effect. And this is probably also the reason why with allergenic stem cell transplantation, probably a substantial number of patients can be cured by this disease. Hmm? However, it is also the treatment with the most complication because this foreign immune system, they can attack also the body of the patient, the skin, the gut, the liver. And this is what we call graft versus host disease. So this is actually the the holy grail to get the graft versus myeloma effect without graft versus host disease. And this is why a lot of people, a lot of researchers are working around the world. And this is getting better and better, but still the risk of giving, having some complication is quite high. So actually allogenic stem cell transplantation is mainly performed for younger patients, for patients who relapse after an autograft, and also for those patients with an unfavorable cytogenetic which do not benefit a lot from the autograph. Yeah, so even if the allergenic stem cell transplantation is quite potent, the majority of the patient will still relapse. So in other words, what we need is to get patient into a good remission. So nowadays, before you go for an allo, you started also with an re-induction or with an induction chemotherapy. And mainly this is used by the novel agents to get at least a CR or near CR or at least a very good partial remission before you go for ALO. And even if you have done the ALO approach and patients are quite well and recovered, um, most of the centers, and that's what we recommend, is to go on with a maintenance therapy to avoid the relapse or prevent the relapse. Uh, molecular remission is coming into the myeloma field since a couple of years now molecular because it was never achieved before molecular remission means with the standard methods you cannot see the myeloma anymore by bone marrow puncture by looking in in the serum for paraproteins immunofixation is negative but even if the immunofixation is negative there is still a lot of a tumor on the board on the patients because otherwise he would not relapse hmm? So therefore, this minimal residual disease means you're looking even more in deep, in depth in those patients. And there are several methods how you can do this, yeah? either by flow cytometry, which is the most convenient. And there are also other molecular methods where you can look, for instance, with so-called patient-specific primers, where you can detect, I think, one myeloma cells in 10,000 normal cells. So if you want to cure, and this is probably the, the, the crucial point, if you want to cure myeloma patients, or if we look to our patients who are cured 10, 15 years after stem cell transplantation, they have all the molecular remission. That means they are free from tumor. It is not 100%. They are also patients which have um, a low amount of tumor, like an MGAS or monoclonal gammopathy of unknown significance, which can maintain also for many years. But overall, I would say achieving a molecular emission is very important for the patient for the long term regarding progression-free overall survival and probably also for cure. Ah, yeah, you can see this at the meeting. They are coming always new agents, so the companies are very interested in multiple myeloma. This is new since 10, 15 years. Yeah? 
So we have different classes, so first the image, the proteasome inhibitors, now coming the monoclonal antibodies. But even this is not the end of the story here. Yeah? Even there, uh, even now, this so-called cellular therapy. Yeah? In the past, allogenic stem cell transplantation was the only immunotherapy in multiple myeloma. But everybody who was working in the lab with myeloma cells felt there is something with immunology. Yeah? And now specific T cells can be created. Maybe you have heard of these CAR T cells, for instance. So this is a new field of research, but also a field uh, which is coming more and more into clinic.